Hey there everyone, this is Jonathan from Nerdy Shogun, and we are back with another movie review for you all today. Some of you may know this one, some of you may not, but we are going to be talking about the DC Comics animated film, Green Lantern, Emerald Knights. A movie which, in my opinion, should have been a cartoon by its own right. So, Emerald Knights revolves around on the Green Lanterns being attacked by an ancient enemy known as Krona, who was appearing from the nearby star Circling Oa. And we learn that Krona is part of the Antimatter universe, sending shadow demons out to probe around and plan for his eventual escape. While this is all going on, Aresia, the newest Green Lantern to the core, is learning from Hal Jordan the various lessons and histories of some of the most famous members of the Green Lantern Corps, ranging from Hal Jordan telling her about Avra, the very first Green Lantern, Mogo, the giant planet that is a literal sentient world that is a Green Lantern, which, that alone, was a crazy concept when I first watched this film. She learns from Sinestro a little bit about Avin Sur, Hal Jordan's predecessor, and she also learn learns from Hal Jordan about Kilowog's previous drill sergeant, Deegan. And I've got to say, a lot of these stories were super cool. In my opinion, it could have been really good for, like, episodes. Like, if they made an anthology series with each episode focusing on a new Green Lantern, that would have been really, really cool, in my opinion. They could title something either like Emerald Knights, like they show here, or they could do something like Book of Oa. Which would be really cool to watch, just to see all the Green Lanterns get more focus. Which, in my opinion, they definitely deserve more of a focus. A lot of people just look at them as the glorified space cops, which they are. But they're just fun to read about. And this one... If you were to ask me my favorite stories out of the bunch here, well, there's a lot. But... <laughs> Avra's story alone was pretty cool. Watching him and the first four Green Lanterns ever fighting against this insurmountable alien armada. And for Avra himself to learn about the p strength of willpower by creating his first ever construct, which was, of course, a sword. And from that, we see how it all shapes out with the Green Lanterns just rapidly evolving, becoming a massive galactic police force, all that cool stuff. But then, if you were to ask me my personal favorites, other ones would be... Kilowog dealing with Deegan, which having Kilowog be like this absolute hard ass of a character, and then watching him as an army scrub under his own drill sergeant, Deegan, who, in my opinion, was even more of a hard ass. Watching a young Kilowog actually confront his drill sergeant at one point for his methods, that was pretty cool to see. As well as Deegan himself, that guy went out like a badass because first of all he squares up against an alien army by himself is getting blasted by a tank at ground zero oh and what does he do at one point he takes insurmountable damage but then gets back up converts his shield he'd been keeping up before into a drill which he then uses to drill through an entire tank blast that is going at 100 percent and straight into the gun turret Right, and blows out the tank from there. It does not get any more hardcore than that, but yet somehow it still manages to do so. With from there, we have the story of Mogo, the sentient planet. And watching him and Bulfunga, or Bulfunga just like running around on his surface just trying to find Mogo, thinking that he's like this one person, but is in fact an entire planet, I gotta say, I definitely laughed a lot at Bulfunga's misfortune, because that dude had trained himself to be the greatest warrior in the galaxy, confronting all these other galactic-style warriors and stuff like that, even taking on a dude with four arms, arms with four weapons in each. And from there, then he confronts an entire living world and doesn't realize it, that the planet that he's standing on is Mogo until the last few seconds, and then he's like, oh, man, no, 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 I'm getting the heck out of here. <laughs> just, just the thought of this dude who's, like, training himself, like, yeah, I'm the greatest warrior in the world, only to then realize, oh, crap, I'm standing on a living world that is now pissed off. He's like, 
Nope, 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 nope. I'm out of here. <laughs> oh, man. But then you have, of course, Abin Sur. And Abin Sur, being Hal Jordan's predecessor, he was a pretty interesting character. And definitely way more focused on destiny than most, but that made him pretty interesting. Not to mention him confronting Atrocitus, whom, to those of you who are major Green Lantern fans, you will know as the founder of the Red Lantern Corps. So, as someone who has read a little bit of Green Lantern recently with stuff like Blackest Night, Brightest Day, and a few others, seeing all of this and seeing these little Easter eggs that only hardcore Green Lantern fans would know, it was kind of fun. Seeing stuff like Atrocitus predicting that Sinestro would start up the Yellow Lantern Corps, or the Sinestro Corps of Fear, as well as Avansor's death, all that stuff, as well as learning about how he is actually imprisoned on Riot, which at that point was a massive prison world, which, not gonna lie, Riot was definitely way more creepy in the movie itself, because you had all these whispers of people promising power, or saying that this planet was now paradise. It was genuinely creepy, and I loved it. But then, of course, we get to the main fight, where Krona pops up, all the Green Lanterns are getting outnumbered and outgunned completely, until the Regia comes up with the brilliant idea to use the planet of Oa itself as a weapon against Krona. Since Krona himself is antimatter, you'd need a massive amount of matter to deflect him, which they do. They turn... They cast their rings on Oa, turning it into a giant green weapon, blast Krona with it, but at one point when they're starting to get overwhelmed, Mogo comes in and provides backup and just proceeds to blast him into the sun. That was a pretty cool moment. I ain't even gonna lie. Now, a lot of people also believe that this is like a loose sequel to Emerald Knights. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. First Flight, another Green Lantern animated film which had Hal Jordan during his first time as a Green Lantern, but having to fight Sinestro, who fell way sooner. And a lot of people say that Emerald Knights is its own thing, that it's its own loose sequel, to, in a way, to First Flight, which I can kind of see that. But if I were to be honest, I feel like Emerald Knights would serve as more of a midquel, in a way, taking place in between parts one and part or two of of First Flight, where Hal Jordan's first introduced, gets some time as experience, and then Sinestro falls. It's kind of confusing, but I feel like it would work better that way to describe Emerald Knights as more of a midquel. And I gotta say, I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. The animation was incredibly clean. And once again, the Green Lanterns do not get enough attention. The only times I could think of they've ever gotten major media was with the Ryan Reynolds movie, which we all know completely tanked. We have Emerald Knights here, a direct-to-video movie, as well as First Flight, two animated features. But then we've also got the Green Lantern animated series on Cartoon Network, which lasted for at least a season. But in that one season, they packed so much in there. With things like the Red Lantern Corps, the Manhunters, the Blue Lanterns, the Star Sapphires, even the Orange Lantern. There was so much packed in there, and that just goes to show that Green Lantern has a lot of great promise if it can be used correctly. And to me, once again, Emerald Knights should have been a freaking TV show. The animation was really, really good. It was clean. It really kind of brought me back to the Justice League Unlimited days when I looked at it. And if you guys haven't seen this yet, I would recommend checking it out. Even if it's just not your cup of tea. It's definitely still a fun DC animated film, which I do recommend. And it's not altogether that serious, if I may be honest. Sure, you have Krona, but he's... <sighs> what sort I'm looking for here? He's cannon fodder compared to what others can be. Like, sure, he has all these shadow demons, he controls an entire other universe... But he was still easy enough to beat once they used used his opposite. Other than that, there's a lot of other promising villains in the Green Lantern universe which I feel need more attention. But if I'm being completely honest here, I would definitely recommend just watching this if you want a taste of Green Lantern. Anyways, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in. 
I hope you all enjoyed this movie review, and we will see you all in the next video. Have a great day.